Today, we talked to Purvis Ellison and Milt Wagner, two key players in Louisville's incredible national title run back in 1986. All right, now pleased to bring in two of the stars of Louisville's 1986 national title team. Uh, we'll go with the older one. Uh, we'll start with Milt Wagner down the bottom and the young buck, the young buck, Purvis <laughs> Ellison that, over there. And uh, I appreciate you guys joining me to talk about, honestly, one of the greatest moments, one of the greatest runs uh, in NCAA tournament history. Uh, I'll defer to, to the elder statesman here to start. Uh, Milt, get, take me through kind of that team because I think a lot of people remember Purvis about that team, but you guys were so balanced. You had three seniors, and it was Purvis's night at the end, no doubt about it, but this was a great team, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it really was. And I think it starts back from last year because that was my red shirt year, and I broke my foot second game of the season last year. And the guys, the, the returning guys, they had a, time, time, had a chance to play more minutes than they would normally play because I was out, and they got seasoned and they got better. And so our team was even stronger coming to that year. Then we had the great freshman class with Purvis coming in and Tony Kimbrough and Kevin Walls and them guys. So that kind of put everything together. Then me coming back that red shirt year to add on to what we had coming back, this, we just had a special team coming back that year. Purvis, what, what was it like uh, for you as kind of the young, highly touted freshman? Any, any good hazing stories? Did they get you with anything early? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you the interesting thing about our ball club was the fact that, uh, like like Milt said, you know, they were the oldest state, statesmen on the ball team, and they truly carried us throughout the season. I think it was such – it was so easy for me to acclimate myself offensively, defensively with what we were trying to do on the basketball court because it was basically essentially their team. It was like – you know, you knew each game that you could depend on Milt scoring 15 to 20 points, Billy Thompson getting 15 to 20 points, Jeff Hall getting 15 points. And they that that was our senior leadership, along with a young a gentleman that didn't play, but he was definitely one of the senior leaders on our team, and that was Robbie Valentine. So that team, you know, uh, it's interesting now. You look at the landscape of college basketball, and you look at the one and dones and that whole – you know, era of basketball that's taking place now. But our team was senior, senior led teams. And I knew, you know, I just felt extremely comfortable in my role being a freshman. Were the expectations for that team, Milt, were they, were they to win the national title clearly coming out of the gates? Hey, absolutely. I mean, that actually, that was the reason I came back because I could have put myself in the draft that year, but uh, I had a setback with my injury and then, I felt like we had a great a great class coming in and returning guys coming in and up and I came I came back actually to win a national championship. I mean, we came into the season with that goal. So that, Jeff, ahead, that's perfect. correct. And so you could understand, you know, it was that goal, not necessarily saying that was the freshman goal, because we had like seven freshmen that came in on that particular team. We were called the Magnificent Seven, uh, <laughs> ironically. But anyway. But that was the goal that was set from the beginning. And like I said, those guys, you know, they took the leadership role and they made sure they kept us, you know, at a high standard in terms of preparation, how we prepared, uh, how we, you know, the attitude that we had. You know, it was definitely led by those the, our seniors on that ball club. And, and, and no people got and pe people no. got to understand, too, we had guys that had already been to the Final Four. Right. I had been to two already and yep. Billy and – and Billy and uh, Jeff have been – and Robbie Valance has been the one. So we already had Final Four experience. So the, the next thing for us was to win it all. So the first time, Milt, that you saw Purvis, do you remember? And do you remember your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, actually, I saw this tall, long, linky kid. <laughs> <laughs> but, but was very skilled. I mean, he never showed emotion. He just went out there and did his job. You could never rattle him. And I think that's how he got the name Never Nervous Purvis because <laughs> he, ne he never seemed to be rattled. He, he played like a veteran, actually. You know, he did out, went out there and did his job, and, and he was one of the best freshmen in the country at the end of the day. 
Who who gave you the nickname Purvis? Was it a TV person? Do you remember? Yes, uh, the gentleman Jock Sutherland, TV oh, personality. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. He, he was the it? gentleman that, that coined that name. Of course, I did. It, it, <laughs> I, I, see, I see people today. I could be in the state of Kentucky and Louisville today. And that's the first thing, how they address me is never nervous person all the time. <laughs> that's classic. I mean, it's right. It's not Purvis. Your, your name isn't Purvis. It's never nervous. It's never nervous. It's never nervous. <laughs> exactly. And you love it. You love it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's great. That's great. All right. So you guys go into the tournament. Uh, you take down Drexel. You, you get through Bradley. You're supposed to do all that, right? You get to the, to the Sweet 16. You got a pretty good team waiting for you. In the Sweet 16, you got big boy Brad Doherty, Purvis. Yeah. Uh, you got Kenny Smith, who, who turned out to be a pretty darn good player. Uh, yeah. Take me through that game a little bit, if you can, Milton. Just kind of your expectations going in and, and what type of game that was. Well, we knew it was going to be a war. You know, playing against North Carolina with Brad Doherty and Kenny Smith and them guys. and But we felt like, like I said, we was confident coming into that year. We felt like we was just as good as them guys. I mean – we went out there and we was going to play our type game and they was going to play their type game. But we was going to see what, what game was going to take over at the end. And uh, I think our guys, we just overpowered them guys at the end of the day. I think we beat them pretty handily. Yes. People didn't yes. expect that, but we, we beat them pretty handily that day. And uh, I just felt we was the better team at that time. Then, then Purvis, you get uh, an Auburn team that was loaded. I mean – Oh yeah, the riflemen, the riflemen, and Chris Morris. Those were good to go. They was tough. They was yeah. tough. Yeah. Absolutely. That that was probably one of the most physical games that we participated in that entire season. But right. going back to the Carolina game, you know, now that when I look back back on it, that that's the game where I realized coaching. And what I mean by that is, I just think about the the game plan that Coach Crum implemented in that game, uh, the execution in terms of Everything, because at that time, that's when North Carolina would throw that half-court trap at you right. at any time, that run and jump trap. But none of that was effective against us because we were prepared for it. So, you know, now, you know, being a coach, you know, now and, and looking back on that, I totally understand what coaching is all about from that from that perspective. But th like you said, but that Auburn game, you know, we mm -hmm. knew that we knew that if we if we can win that Auburn game, then we knew we really had a good chance of winning it all once we got to the final four. Before we continue that interview, I have to let you guys know that it's that time of year again. We waited two years for this moment, and it's finally here. March's biggest tournament is back. Gonzaga is getting ready to run the table. Slippers are being fit as we speak. And our partners at DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook, are putting our lit listeners at the center of the action. How? If you bet $4 on an underdog in a select game this week and that underdog wins, you win $256. That's right, $256. Here's how it works. Download the app now and use the promo code FIELD68 when you sign up. Scroll through the list of select underdogs, bet $4 on them to win, and cash $256 when they do. There's no better way for you to put your college hoops knowledge to use than to put your money where your mouth is with DraftKings Sportsbook. It's safe, it's secure, it's reliable, and you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. So remember, the code is FIELD68, that's FIELD68, to turn $4 into $256. For a limited time only, must be 21 years or older. Restrictions apply. Go to DraftKings.com for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLING. So, Milt, like you said, you had been to a couple Final Fours before. Purvis had at that point. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. go in. What what was this one like? Any great stories going into it before we get to the Duke game? Uh, anything that you'll remember forever leading up to sure. it or early on once you got there? Uh, basically, it was it was all business. Like I said, we had we had veteran guys and Perv and the younger guys just kind of just fed off our backs. You know, we 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 been there. We knew what to expect. We knew what it was going to come down to. And going into the game, a lot of people had us counted out, even the, even the reporters, everybody. And that just kind of gave us another, some more fuel on top of that. You know, it was like Duke was supposed to beat us, you know. And 
And we knew we can beat Duke. I mean, Duke was a great team, but I thought we was a great team also, you know. So so that that was extra incentive for us and an extra fire under our belts. And when we went out there, basically, it was all business. It was all business. We had just beat LSU the, the, the uh, game before that for the semis, and we was ready. We was ready to go. I mean, we was ready to go. And once it tipped off, hey, the rest was here for you. And Perv, and Perv, Pervis kept characters that game. I have to expect. Me and Billy was in foul trouble most of the game. I was chasing Johnny Dawkins the whole game. Oh, man, it was, <laughs> it, it was so, boy. He, you know, he's very quick, him and Tommy Amaker. But at the end of the day, you know, Perv held us. And, and me and Billy made plays at the end along with Perv and Jeff Hall. You know, the veterans stepped up. We all stepped up. Then Perv kept us in the game the whole game and made that key rebound and put back and that carried us over the hump. So Parvis, were you, were you nervous going in? Like, give me the, the real scoop. Like, um, listen, listen, I'm being told this is, I'm being totally honest. With you. It, it, it wasn't really necessarily about being nervous because like I said, it was, my job was easy. It was like when, when we started games, I'm watching milk, Billy, Jeff, all those guys are double digit you know, average double digit scoring on our ball club. So it was like, you know, they took the mantle. It was it was definitely their team. So it was more so I was comfortable in my role. And uh, you know, that particular game, it's it's funny, that particular game and then I think our Metro Conference championship game, which obviously jumped us into the tournament, you know, those were my biggest scoring games. Really? You know, in that particular season. You know, I think I had 20, 28 in the in the the Metro Conference Championship game, and then I had twenty five, obviously, in the National Championship game. Mm-hmm. But those were my two highest scoring games. But like I said, going into a game, that wasn't my responsibility, and it it just that, felt right. like right, right. All I had to, there was no pressure on me. All I had to do was make sure I rebound, block shots, and defend. Yep. So scoring the scoring aspect of that team, you know, that responsibility didn't fall on my shoulders. So it was more so I always watch what those guys were doing in a particular game. So, Mill, for, for a guy from Camden, New Jersey, who had mm-hmm. been in Final Fours but had come up short before, what, right. what did this win against Duke mean to you? Oh, man, it, it was all worth it. Like I said, uh, you know, that was my second year, I, I, my red shirt year. You know, coming back, it, it, it meant everything. It, it, it was the best decision I could have ever made. I mean, and I came back to win a national championship. That was the only reason I came back. It was for no other reason because I had been two times. So just getting there wasn't going to be enough for me. And then I was representing my city, of course, Camden, New Jersey, you know, and I had two of my former teammates on my team with Billy Thompson and Kevin Walls. And we all got to share that championship together, being from Camden, playing in high school together. I mean, it it just was a big thrill for us guys in our city. Purvis. And Louisville. Louisville. No doubt, no doubt. Mm Purvis, did you realize – how your kind of life would change with that performance. I mean, obviously you were highly regarded. Uh, you were going to go high in the draft anyway, any of that stuff. But did you realize how your life would change kind of with that performance? No, not at all. But I, I tell you, ironically, you know, the people, I want people to understand what basketball means to the state of Kentucky. You know, that 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 fan base that we have, uh, Louisville fan base is – is a huge fan base. So expectations are always there, but it's like there's no other professional sports there. So right. we're it. We are definitely yeah. it. So I think that, you know, it was it was a wonderful experience, my four years. You know, listen, here, here I am a number one draft pick, and you hear me saying four year player. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, things like that just doesn't happen anymore. Right. But but it but but it was fantastic and and, uh, you know, it's something that we had cherished for the rest of our lives. All right, give me the coolest thing that happened to either one of you after that. Like, what was the one thing you'll remember? The person that reached out to you, uh, a, a, a party, whatever it was. Give me – my guess is Milt had some good parties back in, in... – uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, let, I'll, let me go first. Let me go okay, first. Okay, you go I first, tell you, I will tell you the, the thing that, that, that I liked was the fact that those guys went on and played with the Lakers and won the championship the following year. 
So that experience watching them when I was in college and them professionally being on a championship ball club, man, I just, you know, that's when I finally realized in that playing in the NBA was a possibility for me, really. really. Was watching those guys, yeah, play for the Lakers and then having that championship run. I was like, I was so amazed with that. Yeah. <laughs> Milt, what 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 yeah. kind of post post winning it all? What what stuck out well, to you? Well, for me, just going flying back to Louisville with the crowd. I mean, all our fans was waiting for us at the airport, man. And you know, we had parade and uh, just just being able to celebrate with my brothers, man. We've been through all the thick and thin and the hard work, and it, it all paid off. And I mean, we just, we all brothers, like we all brothers today. We all stay in contact with each other. I mean, it's like a brother, a brother fraternity for us, man. And uh, just to be able to celebrate with my brothers and coaches and, you know, from all the hard work we did, man, I think that was the biggest thing for me because, you know, people don't understand all the hard work that was put in and, you know, all the ups and downs that went through that season. You know, even when I came back beginning of that year, I mean, I was coming off a foot injury and I came back like slow. I was shooting 32% from the field. You know, we yep. were still winning, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like the way we wanted to win. But, you know, I started getting better and better. Then our team started getting better and better. And, you know, Denny Crump teams, you know, tournament time, we playing some of the best ball in the country every year. So it all worked out. And just at the end of the day, man, just to be able to celebrate and say we was the national champions. You know, at the end of the day. Well, listen, one of the greatest uh, teams in NCAA tournament history, the 1986 Louisville Cardinals. Uh, I appreciate both of you guys, uh, Milt Purvis, for joining us. Uh, one of these 68 shining moments for sure. So, again, uh, thanks for reliving the memories, and uh, and we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Here, guys.